Mr. Ben Fogel, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, mums and dads, staff, and most importantly, our students. Another year has flown by and we are back here already. Would you believe it? Welcome and thank you for joining us today for our Chapter House Speech Day and Prize Giving. For those parents who are tuning in from abroad, and I know of San Francisco, Afghanistan and European countries already, a very long distance hello to you as well. Firstly, I would like to thank my fellow school board members who have embraced their role this year with vigour. Chris Hall, Jackie Hales, Karen Housley, Lawrence McCall and Matthew Adshead have all been fantastic in their, in their roles of support and challenge this year as we have looked at a range of elements across all schools on the campus. I think I can safely say that all our board members have been genuinely impressed with the schools. I was very encouraged to hear that the more time they spent with us, they commented that schools became smaller and truly were their own unique communities within one larger community. Secondly, my very hearty thanks go to Karen Kilkenny and her brilliant team of staff, both in school and in the boarding house. I was told by a student the other day that teamwork makes the dream work, and I believe they were absolutely right. Chapter House proves this on a daily basis. It has been a busy year, yet our staff have remained supportive and enthusiastic in their roles, first and foremost to the students, but also to each other. Can you please join me in a round of applause to thank them? So today is not only an important day for Chapter House, but also for Great Britain. The British people have voted, and by a small margin, the vote is to leave the European Union. Clearly, prior to the vote, we carefully assessed the implications going either way and made contingency plans for whatever the result. One reassuring fact is that our collegiate and in our totality, we have no bank borrowings, not even a penny. So changes in interest rates, whether up or down, will have no impact on us. We are financially secure. There will most likely be a potential small downturn in the UK economic activity, but this September, we still expect to see a small rise in UK day pupils across the school. We believe there will be further government cutbacks, and this would mean less money for state schools and services. So independent education is clearly the place to be. The coming days and weeks will see much rhetoric and knee-jerk comments from all sides, but things will settle and we carry on regardless. However, time to turn our attention a little closer to home. Let us not forget why we are here today, Chapter House. Our academic results reflect the hard work put in by students and staff, with a good percentage in all year groups, from reception through to year five, achieving above the national expectations in reading, writing and maths. I can blind you with the figures that Mrs Kilkenny talked me through, but there's a lot of detail there, so let's sum it up this way. Our students, your children, are doing fantastically. They are confident young learners who are truly embracing the school motto and doing the best that they can with the gifts that they have. I think the students deserve their own round of applause. This year, we have seen the introduction of the Movement for Learning programme in reception, which we feel has really helped our early years classes develop. The project aims to provide compensatory movement experiences for young children when they enter foundation stage. What does this mean? It means that our youngest children are developing a wide range of skills to help them learn, learn more effectively and having fun along the way, the perfect combination. In the upper end of Chapter House, we have introduced a number of accelerated study groups to really stretch and challenge our students within specific subjects. These have featured in writing, mathematics and science. Mrs Kilkenny will give you more of an insight into these today, but the students that I have spoken to about them tell me that they are great fun and very exciting. 
What's with all this excitement and fun? I thought we were here to do schoolwork. Of course, that is the aim, but it's clear that you learn so much more when you're having fun. And that is exactly what I see in Chapter House on every occasion that I join them. Whether it is the public speaking event, the house music and drama, the sports day, or the talent show that we had just last weekend, I am surrounded by bubbly, confident, and chatty children who are keen to tell you about what they have learnt or the activities that they are taking part in. I am very much of the belief that as our students move through Chapter House, it is clear to see that they are not only gaining academic achievement, but also independence, a love of learning and confidence to boot. These skills are supported by teamwork, empathy and respect, which help to ensure students are guaranteed a smooth transition no matter what stage they are at. This year, the staff have put in a great deal of work into the transition booklets to help guide parents and students on the journey between year groups. I had a look through them all and, as always, was intrigued by the comments made by the students themselves. This year, I wanted to just focus on, chap uh, on year five, apologies. It is an important year. You have reached the end of your time within Chapter House and it is incredibly rewarding for us to see how you have progressed over your time here, whether it has been for a short period or for a number of years. So what did Year 5 have to say about their final year? Angel starts us off with, I've had different responsibilities this year as I have been house captain and a boarding prefect. I enjoy taking on the responsibilities. Sophia found High Adventure an amazing experience and loved the challenge and working as a team. Jacob, I loved getting a wow moment in my best book and it made me very proud. And as it should, Jacob, well done. Brandon, the teachers have really helped me improve in my work and my behavior. They have been really supportive. And Seb said that I liked the challenges that we faced in class, but the support to achieve them really helped. Now, for the final two comments, where are Brandon and Seb? Can you raise your hand? Did your teachers write yours? No, even better, well done. I wondered if there was bribery going on. These few comments are just a snapshot, but when you read them, you also, and you also see what goes on in Chapter House day by day, you can see that these children have self-assurance and are doing work that they can be truly proud of. Chapter House stands on its own two feet and is a key part of our collegiate. Our collegiate that stands on firm foundations and our collegiate that has a bright future. In my new role as chair of the board, I am determined to ensure that we provide the highest provision of education and care for your children possible. We will always strive for better in all areas and I can assure you that there is no complacency on our part. I think there are exciting times ahead and I'm looking forward to seeing what the new academic year brings. So to you, the parents, I would like to thank you for your support over the last year. And to our students, thank you for being superstars, each and every one of you. On that happy note, I would like to wish you a very fun-filled summer holiday when we get there, and the very best of luck to Year 5.
honoured guests, parents and students. My name is Theresa Strabel. I'm 10 years old and I'm German. I have been living in UK nearly three years and I'm feeling really happy here. I moved from Germany, where I was born, to Bulgaria at the age of three. I went to kindergarten and year one in a German school in Sofia. It was a really small school compared to QE. The school in Sofia had only 200 students from year one to year 13. We had to drive to a public swimming pool because we didn't have our own. We couldn't do any sports because there were no sports fields or indoor sports halls available. Three years ago, we moved from Bulgaria to UK. It was, I was quite afraid leaving all my friends behind, going to a new country where I couldn't even speak a bit of the language. Before my taste day in Chapter House, my parents told me, because of your age, you have to skip a year and go directly from year one German school into year three Chapter House. I thought my parents were crazy. So you can understand better how I was feeling when we drove for the first time to the taste day. The first time I saw the school, I was speechless. All these friendly teachers and students, all these facilities, and we even had good weather. It was a fabulous day, and I had so much fun. I straight away met new friends. That Everyone was kind to me and helped me to understand what the teacher was saying. My mum asked me at the end, and how was it? I replied, it was great, but I didn't understand anything. <laughs> Nevertheless, after the taster day in Chapter House, all my worries were gone, and I knew that this was going to be the perfect school. After being equipped for the, with the, my school uniform for the first time in my life, I was ready for the first school day in Chapter House. I would like to come to the point where I like Chapter House so much. For me, the school is amazing because of the facilities, the people in different nations, and the opportunities to try new things out in order to find out what we like. Let me expand. I was impressed by how many sporting facilities there were. With this, I had the opportunities to play many sports that I'd never even heard of, like hockey, rounders and netball, which are really fun. The teachers always set a good challenge and support you to reach your goals. I was always very proud wearing the QE uniform when we went for, for when we went to compete against other schools. I have the opportunities to meet incredible people here in Chapter House. Coming to UK without a single word of English has not been the easiest thing. The culture that I found in QE is very unique. It allows people like me to easily get involved in British culture and British school system. There were my form teachers like Miss Gray, Miss King and Miss Young who were always there for me when I needed help. The, po the positive motivation was something totally new for me and brought me to the place where I am now. This also includes my wonderful classmates as well. I got an amazing warm welcome and a great level of support. I met many fantastic new friends here in Chapter House who I will enjoy me moving up through the school with. I enjoy the time with them during outside of school hours. Recently, we went on our residential trip to High Adventure. This trip was great. We had to work as a team in order to complete the challenges and had great fun doing them. Doing the leap of faith was a challenge for me, but my teammates positively supported me, so I managed to do it. Canoeing was great, and we all had a good laugh when one of the other students fell into the water. Coming from a German school, I did not have many opportunities to learn or try new things and, and that all changed when I came to Chapter House. The extra classes during lunch break and after school were out of this world. We were all encouraged to try new things out in order to find out what we enjoy. During music lessons, we started to practice the clarinet. I had enjoyed that very much. 
although I have to apologise to my parents for the noise that came out at the start of the instrument. I have now moved from the clarinet to the clarinet and preparing for level three exams. This is just one. This is just one. <laughs> QE offers similar opportunities in all areas, and this is just one. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> and this is just one thing how QE has allowed me to develop. I would encourage every, everybody to try new things out in order to find out what you like. An amazing year is coming to an end. I'm looking forward to moving to King's Magna, but I will miss Chapter House as well. I would like to thank everybody for the honour of being head girl this year. I might stay one or two years more in the UK before we have to move on, but wherever I go, I don't think I'll find a better school. Therefore, I would like to say it again. QE is amazing. <laughs> Mr. Ben Fogel, Miss Martin, honoured guests, parents, staff, and most importantly, pupils of Chapter House. It has been an extremely busy and exciting academic year for Chapter House, with staff working to increase the children's independence and enthusiasm for learning at every opportunity. This year, Chapter House was chosen to be part of an independent state school partnership for the initial trialling of a new Movement for Learning programme, which has been developed for use with children in reception. The programme is devised by Professor Pat Preedy and Dr Rebecca Duncombe from Loughborough University, with support from Mrs Dustin from QE, and is designed to develop a wide range of important skills, including balance, stamina, attention, fine and gross motor skills. Evidence suggests that all these skills help the children to learn more effectively, both in the short and long term. The reception children were assessed at the start and then participated in daily 20-minute movement sessions with Mrs Dustin and Mrs Schofield. The results of the final assessments are still pending, but there have been clear improvements in the children's concentration and physical abilities, such as swimming and ball skills. Last week, we were invited to London to present the project to the Department for Education. They have invited us back in a year's time to present further findings. Working with an advisor, the Early Years team revamped the foundation stage environment, making writing and the opportunity to learn through investigative play a key focus. Ms Catton started the Forest School initiative by inviting Adam Dove from the Woodland Adventure to run a session with kindergarten and foundation stage. Activities have included learning about woodland animals, sharing dragon stories with Year 2 and making boats out of bark to rescue a princess and her unicorn. The children have been able to use their senses to appreciate the world around them and now have a better understanding of the importance of nature and looking after our environment. The predominant theme of Chapter House Science Learning this year has been Earth and Space. This was launched in the autumn term when the whole collegiate enjoyed a space week of roadshow resources and international guest speakers. From this, Chapter House joined the Tim Peake Primary Project that ushered in a wealth of learning opportunities linked to earth and space curriculum and involved all the children from years one to five. During the course of the project, they enjoyed learning from expert visitors and the children were given the opportunity to grow rocket seeds from the International Space Station. Some lucky Year 5 children also won the opportunity to participate in a once-in-a-lifetime personal live link to our orbiting UK astronaut, Tim Peake himself. There have been a number of accelerated academic groups introduced this year to challenge those identified as having a particular ability in a specific subject. Children in Key Stage 2, who demonstrated both ability and a flair for writing, were invited to Miss Slammon's writing group in the spring term. Within the group, the children reported on school events and produced some wonderful, unique, creative writing, as published within the Clarium. 
As a group, they focus not only on the writing process, but promoting speaking and listening opportunities in order to share ideas. The Accelerated Mathematics Group involved a group of students from years four, five and six who were identified as having a high aptitude for mathematics. The aim of the group is to deepen their understanding, curiosity and mastery through supercurricular activities that happen alongside their everyday numeracy lessons. The group have looked at puzzles and problems from all six strands of mathematics. They have also trained for both the Primary Mathematics Challenge and the Junior Mathematics Challenge, in which they won one silver and five bronze certificates. An amazing achievement, as these are challenges that are open to students up to Year 8. A collaboration between King's Magna and Chapter House Science Teachers has provided an accelerated science group with a series of science enrichment lessons, covering various aspects of chemistry, physics and biology. One sequence of lessons has been linked to the Tim Peake Primary Project, sending children on a space journey from blast-off, launching bo bottle rockets, space survival, testing spacesuit materials, researching space, investigating how craters are formed, and finally return to Earth, testing egg landers. Thrive was introduced in the spring term. This new initiative focuses on looking after students' mental health and well-being. Chapter House students have been working with the pastoral team, playing games to help develop social skills. In the summer term, each class took part in the design and technology whole school project, Grow Your Own Potatoes. Each class were given two different varieties of potatoes to chit, plant and water. Potato monitors were put in charge of watering their potatoes and this week the children harvested their potatoes and designed recipes. The heaviest crop was grown by nursery with a whopping 1.5 kilogram yield. Children's enthusiasm for and knowledge of topics is increased through many activities within school, educational visits and visitors. Within Foundation Stage, the children had the opportunity to visit the theatre to see the night before Christmas. Along with the children in Key Stage 1, they also visited Hesketh Farm, where they looked at a different aspect of farming life, from a tractor ride to collecting eggs and feeding the animals. Year 1 thoroughly enjoyed their visit to Nuzlets as part of their science plant topic. They collected unidentified plants and studied habitats of various animals. They also went potty on their visit with Year 2 to the Rainbow Cafe, where they were able to design and pe paint their own plates. Year 2 visited Ripley Castle in October, where the spiral staircase and the weapons were definitely a highlight. The visit to Harlow Car in April helped the children to learn more about the parts of a plant and do some bird spotting in the bird hide. In the spring term, a Tudor walk around York allowed the Year 3 children to discover some new and interesting places that were around in Tudor York. During the visit to the Minster, the children found out more about who Queen Ethelberga was and how she was connected to York. Even though the weather was changeable, the Year 3s had a fabulous day out in Whitby last week. A walk up to the Abbey gave the children the opportunity to create family trees using the gravestones and learn more about the Saunders family who made sails for ships. They also visited the Whitby whale bones and saw the swing bridge in operation. On a fresh autumn day, the Year 4 children had the opportunity to learn about mini beasts and seed dispersal in the magnificent surroundings of the Yorkshire Arboretum at Castle Howard. The spring visit, which is always a favourite, saw the children stepping into the world of chocolate at the York Chocolate Story. The children discovered how chocolate is made and even had the opportunity to make their own chocolates. Year five were transported back in time on their visit to Merton Park. They spent the day as Anglo-Saxons, collecting wood, making bread and guarding the village. As always, the year fives had a fabulous time on the residential visit to High Adventure in the summer term. There, they improved their teamwork and communication skills by participating in activities such as the high ropes, canoeing and climbing. The children overcame their fears in all of the activities, but the activity they most talked about when they returned was the leap of faith, 
where they had to climb up a pole, stand on a small platform, and then jump and grab a trapeze. There were many visitors who extended the children's learning this year. In September, the renowned children's author Anne Fine visited Chapter House to share with the children the creative pro process of writing stories. She took time to answer the children's questions, and all children received a signed book. In order to increase our, their understanding of the world, the Foundation Stage children have had many visitors, including a pilot, a carpenter, and the school nurse. Other guests include representatives from the NSPCC and the RNLI, as well as Inflatable Planetarium and the Yellow Brick Road Theatre Company. Through raising money for their various house charities, the children learn how to be more responsible and caring towards others. Cantuara ran a series of tuck shops and also a collection at the school concerts raised a total of £530 for Yorkshire Air Ambulance. In November, Aofric House organised a fun day for children in need, with the children coming to school dressed as their childhood heroes and raising £356. Sports relief was great fun as always in the spring term, with the children raising £285 by coming to school wearing sports gear and participating in various sporting activities. Finally, a sponsored mini Olympics in the summer term organised by Darwent, raised a staggering £1,550 for York Young Carers Charity, making an amazing total of £2,721 raised for charities by Chapter House Children this year. More cooperation has been encouraged this year through all of the house events that the children have participated in, led enthusiastically by house captains. The Swimming Gala saw children from nursery to year five competing in a variety of races, from the traditional freestyle and breaststroke to the more obscure house captain noodle horse race. The children who volunteered to participate in the house public speaking impressed the judges with the qualities of their arguments and the confidence in which the children delivered their speeches. But it was this year's house and music, house music and drama, which really showed off the talents of the children in Chapter House. Mangsam and Tegan from Year Five will now perform their entry, "Chasing Cars" by Snow Patrol. Life. 
The Advent Carol service can be a nerve-wracking time for those children who are chosen to perform with the choir or read at the service, but the children always rise to the challenge and perform with such enthusiasm and confidence that they put the adults to shame. The Christmas and summer concerts were again a great success, along with the gym and dance display and the music celebration in the spring term, with all the children performing with so much self-assurance. It has been another enjoyable and busy year of sport in Chapter House. This year, Chapter House have put teams out in rugby, hockey, football, netball, cricket, plus many more sports. After good performances in the ISA North of England cross country, swimming and athletics competitions, we have had several students who have been selected to represent the ISA North of England team in the national finals. In swimming, Ella Rowden represented the North exceptionally well in the London Olympics swimming pool. Zach Shakespeare, Zachary White, Sophia Hill and Louise have all been selected to represent the North in athletics. In team sports, we have also enjoyed success this year, particularly the Year 4 boys team, who have only lost two sports fixtures, recording some very impressive victories in rugby, football and cricket. Next year is set to be another exciting year, with more new initiatives being introduced, as well as consolidating and continuing with the initiatives introduced this year. Movement for Learning for the reception children will continue for them and will also be extended into year one. Dr Walker will continue to work towards chapter house gain in a mark of excellence in science. An assessment without levels will be fully introduced with a parents' curriculum evening being run in the autumn term to explain our new reporting procedures. It is thanks to the dedication and enthusiasm of the staff in Chapter House that the children become such independent and confident learners. We are sad to lose Mrs King and Mrs Burbage as they move on to part-time roles elsewhere, and also Mrs Kendall. Please join me in thanking them for their dedication during their time in Chapter House and to wish them all the best for the future. I must also thank you, the parents, and Miss Martin, who without fail attend all our events within school, from the Advent Carol service and concerts to supporting the children at the many sporting events. These events would not be so successful without your unending support. Finally, I come to the most important people in Chapter House, our wonderful children. Their efforts this year in all areas have made the teachers so proud. They continually amaze us with their enthusiasm and the way in which they aim to live up to the school motto, to be the best that they can with the gifts that they have. Well done to you all on such a successful year and good luck to the Year 5 children who move through to King's Magna in September.
Our guest speaker is a broadcaster, traveller and adventurer. He has rowed the Atlantic Ocean, crossed Antarctica on foot, run across the Sahara and crossed the empty quarter on, cam on camel. He has presented numerous hit programmes on the BBC, ITV and Channel 5, including New Lives in the Wild, Extreme Dreams, Countrywise and Harbour Lives. He writes regularly for the Sunday Telegraph and has written six Sunday Times bestseller books. He is an ambassador for the World Wildlife Fund, Médecins Saint Frontier, and Tusk, Centrepoint, and the Prince's Trust, a fellow of the Royal Geographical Society and patron of the Royal Parks Foundation. He is currently filming his fifth series of New Lives in the Wild, Where the Wild Men Are, a migration for Channel 5. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Ben Fogel. Thank you very much, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, mothers and fathers. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and tears, who strives valiantly, who errs who comes short again and again, because there's no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Those words belong to Theodore Roosevelt, not my own. But the hidden message for those younger ones in the audience today is that it really is the effort that counts. Today is a pretty monumental day for us all a day about which future generations will learn, discuss, and write about for decades to come. Today, boys and girls, is your legacy. It's also a lesson in how to deal with change. As a nation, we tend to have a rather pessimistic tendency to dwell on the negative, but my message to all of you is to focus on the positives. Optimism and hope will get you very far in life. You see, life is about contrasts. Light and shade, warmth and cold, love and fear, success and failure. It's an inevitability of life that there will always be ups and downs, highs and lows, good times and bad times. Throughout these changes, though, the most important asset you have in life is yourselves. Your own personality and character. Both the strengths and the flaws make you all unique. That uniqueness gives you personality. Personality boosts confidence. With confidence, anything is possible. My advice to all of you is to be yourselves. Believe in yourself, and above all, challenge yourselves. Be confident in who you are, and you really can take on the world. I am neither academic nor a sportsman. In fact, as a child, I lacked all confidence. I was blinded by the seeming perfection of all those around me. But I believe rigorously in the importance of taking yourself out of your comfort zone and pushing yourself. Complacency can lull us all into a false sense of security. In my mind, if you haven't failed, you simply aren't trying hard enough. As Winston Churchill once said, success consists of going from failure to failure without ever losing enthusiasm. Over the years, I've tested myself on many different occasions. I've been arrested on the remote island of Pitcairn. I was stabbed in Costa Rica. I've been stranded in the Andes. I've been chased from the British Indian Ocean territories by the Royal Navy. I've helped repatriate East Timorese refugees and delivered aid to war-torn Baltic states. I've collared elephants and translocated rhinos. I've taken part in the World Stinging Nettle Eating Championships, the World Worm Charming Championships, and the Lawn Mower Racing Championships. I've accompanied Princes William and Harry to Botswana. 
I've crossed the Arctic, I've followed plastic surgeons from Great Ormond Street uh, who, while they perform life-changing operations in Ethiopia. I've spent a year living on a deserted island. I've swum with crocodiles. I've trekked across poles and run across deserts. I've leapt out of aeroplanes, scaled mountains, and led more than 20 expeditions to places as remote and varied as Papua New Guinea and Svalbard in the Arctic Circle. My life has been as strange as it is varied. Why have I done it? Because life is full of opportunities, and I've used those opportunities to make me a better person. Seize the moment. You see, life is like a huge ocean. St we all stand on that beach, looking at the endless limitlessness as of that ocean stretching to the horizon like a blank canvas. There are many ways that we can cross that ocean. Some people choose never to leave. They stay in the relative safety and comfort of that beach. Others choose to fly. Some take a cruise ship, while a hardy few set sail using the wind. But those aren't the only options. You see, I chose to row it. I've already told you that I wasn't a natural or gifted sportsman. But 10 years ago, I decided I wanted to challenge myself, take myself out of the comfort zone. And I decided that despite never having been on the ocean before, despite never having rowed, I would set out in a tiny 20-foot rowing boat to row three and a half thousand miles across the ocean from Europe to North America. I found this race online and before I could think about small little details, I signed up for this race. And it was only afterwards, after committing to it, that I thought about those small little details, like the fact I didn't have a rowing partner, I didn't have a rowing boat, I knew nothing about the ocean, and I forgot about it. One year before this race was due to start, I was out at a party in London, still lacking a rowing partner, and there across the room I spotted James Cracknell, an Olympic rower. He'd just won his second Olympic medal in rowing. And my first thought was, there's someone who knows how to row. So I bounded up to him. I seized that opportunity. And I said, hello, James. Uh, you probably don't know who I am, but would you like to row the Atlantic Ocean with me? And he looked down at me. He's, he's much taller than me, as most rowers are. And he said, can you row? And I went, no, nope, never rowed before in my life. And he told me to go away. But I persevered. I left him my details. And he got back in touch a short time later. And we met up. We discussed the pros and cons of a very unusual partnership rowing across the ocean. James, the professional Olympian who has spent his whole life working towards one single discipline, rowing back and forth. I don't know if any of you here row yet, but it can be quite dull. It's a fantastic sport, by the way, uh, but it can be quite dull. I, on the other hand, have had a wide and varied life and we decided that we'd make an unusual partnership. So we teamed up. We had to become ocean yacht masters. We had to learn to navigate using the sun and the stars. We had to do sea survival courses, first aid courses. If either of us broke our bones or teeth fell out, we had to be able to repair one another out on the ocean because we would be unsupported. It was just us on that ocean. We had all our food together. We had a desalinator that converts salt water into fresh water. The one thing I forgot to do in all that preparation was to actually learn to row. And I think if there's one little scenario or one little anecdote that sums up our lack of preparation, it was the morning of the race, there was lots of press interest, cameras all around, we got into our little boat, we'd had an emotional goodbye to our parents, we were going to be away for many months at sea. And I put the oars in and I just felt a tap on my shoulder from James and he went, Ben, you've put the oars in the wrong way round. <laughs> and this was the beginning of this epic crossing. That next week was one of the hardest weeks of my life. And I use this rather appropriately today. It's all about change. Change can be a monumental thing. And I'm not just talking about the boys and girls in here, but the mums and dads too. We, as a country, are standing on the brink of a unique uh, part of history. That week was miserable. I did not want to be on that boat. I would have done anything to get out of that boat. The reason I didn't give up was the fear of the humiliation of turning back. So many people didn't think that we'd make it. We decided that we'd row two hours on, two hours off. Two hours on, two hours off, 24 hours a day. We would never sleep for more than 40 minutes. Can you imagine that? We never had a full night's sleep. And when you weren't actually rowing, you had to make food, which was rehydrated from uh, dry powder in sachets. You had to navigate, you had to fix things on the boat, communicate with home. 
So sleep deprivation became a huge thing. But we soldiered on, and that's when we hit our second obstacle. We realized we had two very different obje objectives. James was on this boat to compete. He wanted to win. He was there as a sportsman, whereas I just wanted to complete it. I just wanted to get from one side to the other. I didn't mind if this took me a whole year. I had resolved myself that that's how long it might take. James, on the other hand, wanted to win this race. And believe me, we had some pretty big arguments. But it was a fantastic lesson in working together as a team, collaborating, teamwork. I can't, underest I can't overestimate how important teamwork is. I'm sure all of you know that already. And soon we started to work together. But that's when the second problem hit, complacency. We became so used to life on this ocean. Imagine waves were taller than this room. We were followed by whales. Sharks were passing us. But we were the masters of the ocean. Nothing had gone wrong. What could possibly go wrong now? And that's when disaster struck. I was on the oars very early one morning. The sun was just rising when I noticed a wave bigger than this room getting taller and taller behind our boat. And the next thing, I was thrown through the air as our boat was pitch-poled. We were capsized by an enormous wave in the middle of the ocean, 2,000 miles from Europe, 1,000 miles from America. And I found myself in the ocean, no form of rescue. And if I'm to be honest, I thought that was it. I couldn't see how I could survive this moment. There was our upturned boat, mountainous oceans, no one to come and save us. But it's amazing what you can do with your mind and your body in moments like that. I got back to the boat. I was able to right it. James was still there. He was in the little cabin. And I was ready to pull what's called the EPIRB, the emergency beacon, to summon rescue. But in the middle of the ocean, helicopters can't reach you. Aeroplanes can't reach you. The only form of rescue is a ship has to be diverted and it has to travel thousands of miles. In the meantime, before I'd had a chance to press this little button that links up to a satellite, James looked at me and he said, right, you've got 30 minutes to dry yourself off and pull yourself together before we lose a race position. He wanted to carry on. But do you know what? It was the best decision we ever made. Contrary to what I felt, I gave in to James's better judgment. If we had pulled that emergency button, rescue could have taken up to two weeks. We would have certainly been capsized again by those huge seas. We were running out of food. And we carried on rowing. And it was the moment two strangers became firm friends. We had the same objective. We wanted to get off that ocean as quickly as we could. And somehow, 49 days later, we rowed that little boat into the harbour, the first two-man boat by a full two days. We beat all of the others. And I like to think that that little story sums up your opportunities. Anything is possible if you put your mind to it. I suppose we're all now on that beach together. Today really is a brave new world, one full of uncertainty. But make no mistake, there is plenty of hope. I'm going to leave you with my favourite poem. It's called Risk. To laugh is to risk appearing the fool. To weep is to risk appearing sentimental. To reach for another is to risk involvement. To expose your ideas, your dreams before a crowd is to risk their loss. To love is to risk not being loved in return. To live is to risk dying. To believe is to risk despair. To try is to risk failure. But risks must be taken because the greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. Because the people who risk nothing do nothing, have nothing, are nothing. They may avoid suffering and sorrow, but they can't learn, feel, change, grow, love, nor live. Chained by their attitudes, they've effectively become slaves. They've forfeited their freedom. Because only a person who risks is truly free. Chin up. Chest out, be kind, be open-minded, care for others, make compromises, share, work together, and believe. But above all, be hopeful, because every one of you here can achieve your dreams if you can only believe in yourselves. Thank you.
These are the prizes for the academic year 2015 to 2016. The Queen's Cup for Head Girl goes to Theresa Strabel. The King's Cup for the Head Boy goes to Sebastian Marr. The Prince's Cup for Deputy Head Boy goes to Louis Barton Hamilton. <laughs> Year prizes for achievement. Year 5, the King Edward VIII Cup goes to Mang Sam Sengahang. Year four, the Queen Elizabeth II Cup goes to Oliver Hobbs. <laughs> Year three, the King William IV Cup goes to Jessica Merritt. Year two, the King George III Cup goes to Sophia Sowersby. Year one, the King George I Cup goes to Beth Tackadine. The Foundation Stage Cup goes to Amelia Scott. <laughs> Merit Prizes for Outstanding Effort. Year 4, the Queen Victoria Cup goes to Hannah Mellowish and Adam Sykes. Year three, the King George IV Cup goes to Lara Haig. Year two, the King George II Cup goes to Zach Archibald. Year one, the Queen Anne Cup goes to Amani Jones. The Foundation Stage Cup goes to William Farthing. Special prizes. For English, the Chaucer Cup goes to Katie Wainwright. For Mathematics, the Pascal Cup goes to Ellis Bailey.
for science, the Plato Cup goes to Charles Hansard. For French, the Molière Cup goes to Saul Sowersby. For computing, the Eckert Cup goes to Kean Senior. For music, the Handel Cup goes to Oliver Cole. For drama, the Stage Cup goes to Tegan King. For sport, the Challenge Cup goes to Sophia Hill and Zachary White. For technology, the Foster Cup goes to Jacob Oliver. For art, the Monet Cup goes to Suash Rai. For history, the Churchill Cup goes to Daniel Archibald. For equestrian, the Windsor Cup goes to Sharen Awambang. For geography, the Shackleton Cup goes to Jake Ashworth Reynolds. Progress Shield goes to Lily Powell. For outstanding effort and achievement across all areas of the curriculum, the Barker Shield goes to Meeman Thapper. For gaining the most Vivo stars this academic year, the Chapter House champion for the boys is Charles Berger. The Chapter House champions for the girls are Lindsay Mimi Marty and Sophia Hill. With a new school record of 1 minute and 32 seconds for a quarter mile run, the girls' infant cross country was won by Molly Place. With a new school record of 1 minute and 29 seconds for a quarter mile run, the boys' infant cross country was won by Benjamin Eckenham. (laughs) 
With a new school record of four minutes and nine seconds for a three-quarter mile run, the junior girls cross country was won by Louise Lombalavu. With a time of 4 minutes and 38 seconds for the junior boys cross country, it was won by Matthew Edbury. With a time of 7 minutes and 1 second, the senior girls cross country was won by Sophia Hill. With a time of 6 minutes and 38 seconds, the senior boys cross country was won by Zachary White. And Chapter House graduation prizes are presented to Angel Bardi, Rhys Davies, Siobhan Gordon and Kira Hayes. Ellis Jones, Brandon Lovell, Ella McMillan, and Tabitha Makufa. <laughs> Jensen Moody, Georgia Moyo, Nicola Encube, and Charlie Reed. Healy Smith, Oscar Sutton, Ashwin Tamang and Jessica Thomas. <laughs> Josephina Weldon and Maria Weldon. And now for the house prizes, I'd like to invite the house captains on stage. House cross country running was won by Aofowick. The house swimming was won by Leminge. House rounders was also won by Leminge. The house football was won by Cantuara. The house public speaking competition was won by Aofowick. The house music and drama was won by Darwin and the Monarchs Cup for house points was won by Cantuara. <laughs> now for the post of responsibility for the year 2016 to 2017. The head girl will be Imogen Wheatley. The deputy head girl will be Hannah Mellowish. The head boy will be Oliver Hobbs. The deputy head boy will be Matthew Edbury.
Prefects will be Patricia Ackeret, Coro Hickman, James Homer, Ella Rowden and Adam Sykes. The Chapter House Boarding Prefects will be Daniel Bardi and Fallon Hartley. More Prefects will be chosen as the year goes on and the House Captains will be chosen in September. I'd like to invite Miss Martin to present the Eagle for seven years service to the school. This award goes to Nadia Hodgkinson. Come 
House, I'd like to say a big thank you to Ben Fogel for taking time to be with us today. I would also like to give a special thanks to all the teachers who throughout our out the year have guided and supported us making learning enjoyable and fun as well as my friends for being there. A big thank you from me to the PE team 
who have support us on our sport, many sporting fixtures for all kinds of weather, te teaching us teamwork and sportsmanship. <laughs> on behalf of the boarders, I would like to thank the boarding staff for their patience, organisation and kindness. Please give a round of applause for all of my fellow students for working hard to achieve so much this year. for sharing our speech day with us. Prize winners parents, please feel free to stay in the hall to take photographs of your children. All the other children can be collected from their classrooms. That concludes our chapter house speech day. Please remain standing for the platform party. Yeah. Thank you.